Um, we do have a quorum, and there's no one sign up for our citizens and community groups. And at this time now, if we all could stand, you know, ask Commissioner Easy or the leader. Excuse me, no, I'm sorry. We, we have a pastor in the audience. Pastor Bird, if you would lead us in prayer, please, sir. Let's bow, yes. Eternal God, let's bow, yes, Jesus. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for each and every person that's here to ask your daddy. Lord, we will thank you for this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. At this time, commissioners, are there any additions to the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to add the uh, city of York after the executive session, please, sir. Okay. I would like to add our county administrator right before waste management. Good evening. Hi, y'all. Hey, how you doing today? Attorney Cruz is not going to be in attendance. Okay, okay, all right. Where do you want to put it, Terry? Our county administrator will Where? go right before waste management. Right at the top. Oh, so, okay. Right before waste management. Commissioner Jackson, are there any additions? No, I don't have any. Thank you. Okay. Last call. Are there any additions? Any more additions? Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? I second. Think. Has been motioned by Commissioner Hall, second, second by Commissioner Walker. Questions? All in favor with the raising of your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Adoption of minutes, August the 22nd, 2016, regular session in Section 8. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Is there a second? I second. Has been motioned by Commissioner Ezell, second by Commissioner Hall. Questions? All in favor, raise up your right hand. Motion carries this now. Our county administrator, Mrs. Cotton. Ms. Cotton. Okay, this is going to be, um, I'm going to read the minutes from the last meeting. Yes, sir. That you all amended the agenda on to have the city of York. I've met with the county sheriff. I've met with Mr. Creer as chairperson of the 911 board. And um, I've talked to Attorney Pruitt. We've also discussed some items with Buddy, I mean, I'm sorry, with Sonny Brassfield at ACCA. And uh, we've also talked with legal counsel. The ACCA. Um, we are concerned because of the additional cost that the general fund is going to incur as a result of the transfer of the law enforcement function to the Suffolk County Sheriff Department. Uh, we're incurring costs now. We're in the month of September, and you know we also have budgeting issues. Uh, we're also concerned because. Um, Last, last week, we received $9,000 from the assessor's office, and that was for motor vehicles, and we have 11 meals in the junk fund. So we can only imagine what the city of York received. I know that they've uh, assessed uh, one quarter, one half percent sales tax, but we're gonna, I'm gonna say that it's gonna be November or December before they receive anything of like that. So the only thing, you know, is do they really have the ability to pay the commission for the cost for September if they can't pay payroll, and are they going to have the responsibility, meaning the ability to pay other costs? So um, my recommendation to the board, and if you look at this, uh, the paperwork here, we're estimating, talking to the sheriff and also to the engineer, that it's going to cost approximately four hundred and sixty thousand dollars for the commission to assume this function, and that includes a past due amount for the transportation of body and the housing of inmates. It is my recommendation that the commission file a lien against the revenues of the city of York. File a lien with the something tax collector for every harm tax, for motor vehicle licenses, file a lien with the something commission for beer tax and for waste tax, and also file a lien with RDA. Because if they are allowed to pledge any of these revenues to anyone, then you will not receive your money. And just like they're broke, we will be broke. My recommendation is that you file this lien and that this lien is only released 
at the point in time where you have a signed agreement with them as to how they're going to pay the cost. And even with the agreement, that it includes a phrase that it's going to come directly from their revenue source. Whatever the charge is going to be per month, it either come directly from the assessor, directly from their waste tax, or directly from RDS. Commissioners, you've heard of recommendations coming from our county administrator. Is there a motion to adopt? Mr. Chairman, I move that we would adopt the recommendations given from our county administrator due to the fact we have not given our employees in the Sumter County a raise in so many years, and we have promised them that we would give them a raise. Is there a second? I second. There has been motion by Commissioner Jackson, second by Commissioner Hall. Questions? All in favor of the raise of right hand? Motion carried announced. Waste management, we have Mr. Mike Davis and Mr. Renee Foche here. So at this time, if you all could please come up, commissioners out, talk to Mr. Davis and Mr. Foche and ask them if they could just come in and give us a report on how everything is coming along. And thank you all so much for being here. And at this time, you all can come in your own way. Thank you all. Mike, Mike's going to be talking about this sheet here. Okay. So this, all right. is, this is the information he'll be discussing. Okay. There you go. Y'all brought some more money? <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Commissioners. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, what I was asked to do was kind of give you an update of where we are and where we're going and what's kind of happening. So what I did was I kind of looked at uh, the process since we started this. So uh, the most important things is job creations. And uh, since we initiated our uh, growth aspects at Waste Management, from 2014 through 2016, we've added 26 new full-time jobs. Those, those are jobs, full-time jobs, benefits, 401k, uh, you know, health care, the, the whole nine yards. So that's 18 uh, site employees and eight customer service employees and seven temps for a total of 33 jobs for the entire process, which we're very proud to announce. Um, with that, to kind of look at where the numbers are, what we did was, is since you operate on a physical year, October to October, uh, and we haven't completed a full year yet, what I did was just took a snapshot comparing for 2014, 2015, and 2016. So, you know, when we started this, the tonnage was at 69,000 tons. Uh, so the first year, we were up 6% to 73,000 tons, and in 2016, uh, we're up 90,000 tons for a 24% increase, but it's a 30% increase since we actually started. So all positive growth. The most important thing is the revenue. In 2014, for the same period, October through <laughs> August, uh, we presented you with 327,000. Uh, it increased to 398 in October. Uh, so we got a $70,000 uh, increase year over year for that, for that period. Uh, my tonnage is <coughs> trending positive. Our goal is 150,000 right now. Uh, with what we received through this month and what we have contracted, we're at 140. So, um, and we got four more months left. So it's it's the trend is extremely positive. So that that's a good thing. The most important thing are the waste management growth initiatives. Uh, the I guess the most important thing for this area was the company's commitment to grow within Sumter <coughs> County. And the one thing you have to realize with this statement is, is, is that we had two large service centers in Louisiana and Texas, and they chose to close those facilities in Louisiana and Texas and consolidate uh, everything at a mill. So now uh, we're basically refurbishing a building to house more employees, hire more employees, but waste management's chosen to do all of their business, all of their sales, their contracting, and customer service through a mail, 
for two hazardous waste landfills and, and 80 subtitle D landfills. So that's 82 landfills being served out of, the, out of the ML office now, which is phenomenal to have a call center of that magnitude located in a rural community. So we've got some hurdles, especially with telephone and high-speed internet, but we're, we're making that happen. But the, the best news is the fact that the company chose to do it and consolidate in Sumter County to create more jobs. And then on top of that, um, with our growth aspects, uh, I was able to receive $4.5 million in capital this year, uh, which we invested in purchasing the Mount Hebron Rail Facility, additional trucks, trailers, specialized unloading equipment for our rail business for our outer region markets, which is where most of the volume that we talked about earlier is coming from. Um, on a monthly basis, we're currently unloading gondola and intermodal movements and a few bulk tanker cars, but the, but the most of the volume is coming in in gondola and intermodal movements, which is good because that's going to have uh, additional revenues for Sumter County in the fact that the truck drivers have to stop and get more diesel fuel and buy food, and then hopefully here very shortly I'll have the opportunity to hire some more people in regards to that activity and additional truck drivers uh, to facilitate that that part of the new, new business. So. I uh, appreciate everyone's patience uh, in this process. Uh, we knew it was going to be a slow process, but the most important thing is is that all, all of our efforts have been positive up to this point. I just wish we could get more tons in faster, but, you know, the economy's not revved up to, you know, where we want it to be, but uh, we've got positive, positive volume, positive growth, and we've created jobs, so that's the most important thing. Any questions? How many people you got working now? A hundred. One hundred? Mm -hmm. How many are you going to have on the top out? I think that, you know, with where we're going right now, we'll never be back to where we were, but I, I, I see ML being somewhere in the neighborhood of about 175 to 200 people here in the next two to three years if, if the trend holds, uh, especially with some of the more consolidating efforts that we're doing. Companies committed to keep Amel on the map. Uh, Amel happens to be one of the few facilities that the company owns to where we have longevity, long-term longevity. We have a facility in Model City, New York, that they can't get expansion, so we're basically redirecting all that volume to Amel right now. Uh, so the, the Amel facility, the Lake Charles facility, Kettleman, California, and a facility we have in Oregon are the primary ones that have growth right now. That's separate from the, the subtitle D, which takes most of the, the MSW and special waste, but for the half waste, it's focused on four facilities right now, so, which is positive for us. Any other questions for Mr. Davis, Commissioner? One other thing before we go, I'd like for Renee to give you an update. There was another initiative that we worked on. It was called the Tiger Grant. I don't know if y'all remember that. And I'd like Renee to kind of explain what happened and where we are uh, with that. So, sure. As, as you all recall, this past summer, actually starting in the spring, we had a concerted effort uh, to uh, secure federal funds. It's called the Tiger Grant from the Federal Transportation uh, Board. Um, tied in with the Alabama Gulf Railroad. What you hear Mike talking about, and what we've talked about uh, periodically, is that rail is critical to the growth of our business. And right now, uh, we can handle um, about, about 68,000 uh, 68, tons of bike. Where did go there? Where they have? Yeah. <coughs> but we can handle about uh, 68,000 tons on a rail car. Um, and our, and our competitors can go up to 88,000. So um, what this uh, Tiger Grant was for was to, for the Alabama Gulf Railroad to enhance the capabilities of their bridges and trestles to handle that additional weight, which would then make us absolutely competitive on a transportation basis with other facilities around the nation. So, I mean, if you're talking about, you know, Six eight percent difference in the terms in, in terms of how much weight you can bring. If you multiply that times two hundred cars, that's a big difference. That someone who's trying to remediate a project and bring it to the landfill—that's a lot of cost savings for them 
to ship bigger volumes, right? So that's what this uh, grant was directed towards. And I want to thank you all for your exceptional leadership and involvement in that effort. Uh, we did not we did not get the, 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 the nod that we wanted, but this was the best presentation that, that the Alabama Golf Railroad has presented. We're not going to give up on it, and we're going to, we're going to ask you again uh, to get out in front <coughs> as, as you are, and hopefully this time three is a charm. But uh, we couldn't have asked for more support from you all because obviously you understand just like we do, the, the more capacity, the more capabilities we can create on ML, the better off it's going to be in terms of volume, jobs, tax revenues, et cetera. So I wanted to explain to you what, what basically happened, the fact that we, we weren't successful, but encourage you to please join with us again as we push next year, hopefully, to, to gain that Tiger Grant. So again, we couldn't have asked for more support, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Forsen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with the, uh, the growth, growth initiatives that you all just talked about, Mr. Davis, uh, in the immediate future, how do you expect that to Im impact the ML facility as far as those other landfills not being used anymore and, and uh, being consolidated down to two landfills? Immediately, I mean, what, what time frame do you see the increase in tonnage uh, happening? We're seeing it right now. Right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up 24% from where I was prior to year, so hopefully that trend will be, you know, even more as we go forward. My goal is 150000 and I'm right at projecting 140 right now with what I got contracted. If you reach the 150000 goal, how many employees do you uh, think that will uh, add on to your current? That's hard to say because, like, right now, you know, I've got orders in for brand-new Peterbilt trucks, and... They should be in probably, hopefully, the end of November or first of December. So there, there, there would be five jobs right there. And then once I get the trucks, then I've got to hire more mechanics and so forth and so forth. So, you know, I would say maybe eight or ten more jobs here beginning the first of the year for sure. What's, what's the process that you all use for uh, advertising these jobs as they become available? Is it in-house or? WM.com. WM.com. Mm -hmm. Do you all have a... Uh, use the local papers to advertise or is that we do sold? and then we have uh, recruiters that are they're, they're not part of waste management as direct employees or contract employees and then they use social media uh, I, I mean all the younger people don't get jobs like we used to get jobs <laughs> in the paper I mean you got to use Twitter and uh, Facebook and all that we've learned that to find young talent that's where you go so that that's what those guys do is However you put those messages out there, that's what they do. But primarily, uh, they'll post them first on WM.com. If, if you go to the, the WM.com website, look under careers, and then you choose what state you're interested in, say for Alabama, and then under Alabama, it'll list all of the WM uh, facilities that are there, and you choose a mail, and then it'll show you all the jobs that are available for a mail. And... Uh, you know, about once a month, twice a month would be good to check for a mail. But there's other opportunities within the state. And then I tell a lot of people, too, to look in Mississippi because we have a big hauling company in Meridian uh, that, it, that you know, employs a lot of drivers and mechanics, too. So we tell them to look there. And Tuscaloosa. But Tuscaloosa is a different market area. We're, we're in the Gulf Coast market area, but Tuscaloosa is in what they call the ATAC, uh, which is was different. So, like Renee and I, we, we report our our boss is in Jackson, Mississippi, and their their boss is in Nashville, Tennessee. So they have different structure. But that WM.com will get you to where the jobs are. So if you if you have friends or family or people that are looking for jobs, just tell them to go online and, and look at WM.com at least once or twice a month to see what's there. So, yeah, we, we 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 just filled the last customer service position, I think, last week. So there was two of them, they got that, so. And we'd like for y'all, if you look into your surplus, and end up with a little surplus money, just think about the county needs some, you see. York and everybody's begging us. We don't have anything. Are there any more questions for Mr. Davis and Mr. Porsche? Thank you all so much for coming in. We, we're hoping that we can maybe do this quarterly, uh, sure. half a year, but I think quarterly 
thus far it's been going well and we just want to make sure that everybody get abreast of what is going on so once you all come and give us notification so it can be dispersed out and where the public can have that notification as well so thank you all very much as always Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, commissioners, and section B is the approval of claims and payroll in there. Motion to approve. Second. Is that second? Second. Has been motioned by Commissioner Armistead, second by Commissioner Walker. Questions? All in favor of the raising of your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Section C, invoice of services. Is there a motion to approve? Second. It has been motioned by Commissioner Armistead, second by Commissioner Walker. Questions? All in favor of the raising of the right hand. Motion carries unanimously. In Section B, there's a request for travel and also a request for an advance. Um, travels for our assistant engineer and the advances for two jail personnel. Is there a motion to adopt? Is there a second? Second. Has been motioned by Commissioner Hall, second by Commissioner Walker. Questions? All in favor of the raising of your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Section E, employee, employment of personnel, and this is our, in our tax collector uh, office, and uh, our tax collector, uh, Mrs. Annie Ruth Wilson, has put that recommendation into our packet, and uh, our, at this time now, is there a motion to adopt? Mr. Chairman, we can that we accept the recommendation of our tax collector for the temporary position to be filled. Is there a second? Second. Has been motioned by Commissioner Armistead, second by Commissioner Ezell. Question. All in favor of the raising of your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Section F, invoice for approval of the CDBG grant. Is there a motion to approve? So is there a second? Second. Has been motioned by Commissioner Hall, second by Commissioner Walker. Question. All in favor of the raising of your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Mrs. Gully. Good afternoon. How's Good afternoon. everybody? How are you? <clears throat> Basically, all I have is uh, what I've already sent out by way of emails to the stakeholders here in the county with regards to Homeland Security opening up its uh, doors again to us, whereas, you know, years before we used to get that $75,000 and use that to assist our volunteer fire departments, uh, you know, with purchasing items that they could not purchase. Once again, we have been given an opportunity to competitively bid for uh, items this time. Before, there's no X amount that's gonna be given to us and we use that to our liking. Everything that we do um, in this particular grant, you have a minimum of $10,000 that you can submit to, up to $25,000. Once it goes over the $25,000 limit, then there's some other little things that the applicants would have to do. But at least right now, we can have each of our 19 volunteer fire departments compete individually. So each of them can get the $10,000 up to $25,000 per their application. The eligibility is stated in the email with regards to what you would have to do uh, locally, and that is to maintain your uh, membership listing of the NIMS classes. So anyone that tries to compete or wants to compete, they will have to make sure that their NIMS is still in compliance with federal law. So um, I put in the letter things that they would need to show to prove that they have their membership status and they've taken those various classes. So um, the letter pretty much came from uh, the verbatim uh, document that was sent to me by the Homeland Security Office there in Montgomery. So there's nothing that I've added. I just want to be very clear because the time frame was less than a month. And uh, I've asked for the deadline to get back in time to me so that we can uh, go over it, proof it, make sure that everything that is required is there and that the applicant is eligible to receive those funds. Because I do not want us to have to repay back anything that due to negligence on my part, not checking. So that's... Excuse me. Do, you, do we have the information that you were told me? I shipped it all out by way of email, so it's, it's in your email. I have a copy of it here for me right now. If I can make a copy and give it to you before I leave. Yes, ma'am. I sure will. I'll tell you because before you 
stand up to tell us about information, I'd like for you to at least run this information on and have it to share it with us. Because right now I'm at a blank, not knowing what you're talking about. So you haven't gotten any emails at all from my office? No, I haven't. Okay. All right. I, I know that it, it was emailed our commissioners last week, and I don't know who might have not been to get it or not, but I know it, it was emailed out last week, you all. Did anybody else get the email? You know, it's not required that we have computers and that we look at our email. Right, exactly. But did, did anybody who got there, Mrs. Gully, got there? Okay. Yeah. That's her job. I got it. But you we, got it. We were talking, Mr. Chairman, about going paperless here for a while and to save on paper. And so some of those files are rather large. And, you know, I, I prefer an email copy. Ms. Jackson, I guess she would rather have a paper copy to make an accommodation for her. Yes. So, so and, and right now, while we had this going forward, so, because I know you get uh, a bundle at times. Going forward, who would like a paper copy? We know Ms. Jackson. So I'm assuming Ms. Jackson is the only person would like a paper copy. Okay. If it's something that you're going to take action on, it you need a copy to be in for the bench. Right. Let me throw that in. It's something that you have to take action on. Mm -hmm. If you need a copy, a hard copy, because you're going to put it place it in the minute book. So I mean the minute record. So really, if it's because they have to take action on it, you give if you give me a copy, then it'll be in that pack because right. it's going to be a part of the official record. Right. So, so I need a hard copy. Right. And in turn, you all would need a hard copy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not it's if it's an action item. What that makes the signature page. If it's an action item, it's, we have the board meeting pack that you have here. Mm -hmm. We actually have an event that Where's we keep the in the back that we have to keep for the record. Right. Right, so that's what I'm saying. If it's an item that you're actually considering and voting on, we need the hard copy for the record. The AEL that uh, is included in there is a 305-page uh, document, which is the items that each of the stakeholders can review, get their numbers off of it, and put it in the budget detail worksheet. So that item doesn't have to be printed to be viewed to get the number off of it, because it's the number that you need to put on the worksheet, which is a one-page document that goes with the application. So for the items that Ms. Jackson will need, I'll be happy to put them in a box on tomorrow. Thank you. All right. But the ALE, I have one printed off, but it's, it's one that, um, you know, can be viewed. It doesn't have to be printed. Because you're only getting whatever item you're selecting to purchase or wanting or desire to, to have then you just need that number to put it on that budget detail worksheet. So that you can look at. Okay. Any, any other more questions? I don't want to have any more. Okay. All right, commissioners. All right. Okay, our deadline for having uh, the applications back uh, is the close of business September 29th because October the 11th is the deadline that uh, we have to have all of our applications in to sell. I mean, uh, excuse me, sell is where we were when we had the class on it. But all of our applications will have to be back in by the 11th of October to Homeland Security. So um, the time that we have is to, as turnaround time, you know, was just shortened. When I got the application, which was Monday after my visit on August the 30th, uh, I sent this letter out. And then I sent a template as to how to complete the application. So uh, for those, you should have gotten two emails from me, one with the original application and the data uh, needed. And then the second one, one would be the template that shows you how to complete the application. OK, now what is the application for? The application is for you, say for example, uh, is it the development board that you uh, service? Mm -hmm. Okay, if they wanted to compete for an item and needed something, mm -hmm. it would have to be an item that is, first of all, in that authorized equipment list. If it's okay, now what kind of equipment is on that list? Say, for example, when we bought the uh, generators mm -hmm. uh, years ago for the uh, volunteer fire departments, those are the type of items. You have general, uh, you have equipment such as that, you have medical equipment, you have uh, 
turnout gear. We have um, um, the security. What about safe shelters? No. They are not on there. No, the three things that uh, the, this particular, excuse me, that this particular application is uh, allowing you to look for is going to be um, communications, interoperable communications, uh, mass gathering securities, and or soft target critical infrastructure protection. Those are the that areas. Work. Again, the uh, turnout gear, the medical equipment, is just a slew of things that's in that AEL list, which is comprised of 305 pages. So uh, if you have an idea as to what it is that your agency is needing, if you can't find it, I'll look in the list. But that authorized equipment list is where you go to get the number to apply to your budget detail worksheet that is to be submitted with your application. So the process is something that I used to do. Now they're <coughs> giving it to the applicant to do because it's competitively bid. But everything that they do channels through EMA office and it is that whole package will be sent in from however many uh, agencies within the county that wants to compete for whatever it is that they want. And my agency will send that all to Homeland Security. Okay now, when they are talking about upgrading things, is it possible for you to use this to upgrade the EMA department? It's used to purchase the equipment that you can maintain because uh, they have teams now. The teams uh, years ago got the monies to um, initiate their original purchase and to make that uh, purchase available for a region. Now this year, uh, they are allowing us to come back as a county and petition for monies that uh, is no longer going to, per se, a team, but it's now going to the local EMA offices. So, <clears throat> to say, for example, my office, I would have to have something specific that I want to buy for my office. If it's on the authorized equipment list, that is an item that I can purchase, and I've uh, successfully taken all of my NAM classes, which I have. I am then eligible to compete once I get my application in uh, before the 11th. But I'll be competing with the other 67 counties for everything that, uh, all of the monies that Homeland Security has out there available. Well, why don't some of us get together then and, and upgrade our EMA department so that we can be able to have up-to-date communication devices. That's doable. If you it's, know, it, you know I, I think that that would be better than to take and say and put it out here in the different, I know the fire departments are important, mm -hmm. but I think this would be more important because this would help the entire county. If the because, items that, you know, just like last week, you know, they mentioned something about the city of York and Sumter County's uh, communication devices were not quite up to par. Mm -hmm. So if it what if it's not, let's take that money, sit down, put all our heads together, mm -hmm. and figure it out. How do you feel about that, Sheriff? Yes, ma'am. I actually have been talking to a couple of people about our communication issues already. Um, because we've had a couple of incidents that happened and we really couldn't talk to each other as far as agency to agency. So from my standpoint, that's already in the works of what we can do to help service our law enforcement in our counties completely. And see, law enforcement has uh, an area that law enforcement can, can use specifically. This one is being given to the local um, county administrator or county commissions by way of the EMA's office so that they can uh, assist with some of the volunteer fire departments, whatever other stakeholder in the county that needs it. 
uh, law enforcement, Andy Norris, yes. is who he would submit his request to for things of communications <laughs> that he, the sheriff, offered with me. So okay, this but, is giving but, us but, an opportunity. But what I'm talking about, and I know I'm taking up a little time. That's fine. But it's kind of like when we upgraded our library, we took the same equipment mm -hmm. and upgraded it in one place. Mm -hmm. Then it hooked on to the other, and all of it went together, and it made a tremendous impact upon the system. Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm saying. Yeah. If you take and get with him, put your heads together and use his e same equipment he has that's over here, and then it may not cost but maybe $500 to take and connect all of them together. Okay. That that's is, all I'm saying. And I understand. It's, and that's not even uh, a problem, but it also gives the other agencies, they can still bid on anything themselves. He and I can work together on a project for uh, the sheriffs and the uh, EMA's office. That's not a, that won't deter another fire department. So all compete. I'm saying, Margaret, is that the other fire department is just like if this librarian hasn't been trained to do something, then you could be getting a pile of junk that you wouldn't do nothing but put in a cabinet someplace. That's all I'm saying. But if you take and take your material mm -hmm. and it's equivalent to his material, the material can be used all over the county. Then you won't be sitting up here saying that I have uh, a department throughout the county that I got to go to uh, Demopolis or Choctaw County and get somebody to work this equipment. That's all I'm saying. Now they're saying that we don't have up-to-date equipment. Yes, ma'am. I have a funding question. Sure. Is it going to be a situation where they're going to send the money? We only we have to pay for the pay for the equipment first and then get reimbursed. No, it didn't. Say it's that. going to. Do you know how it's going to work? Well, before it used to be where as we would purchase it and we got our reimbursement. Right. Back. We have uh, reimbursements that will come to us pretty much the same way. I'm sure. So we have to general we, fund. We have to pay for it. We first. will be purchasing it. Yes. Now, I can also, you know, I'll be putting in my request as soon as I get that notice saying that we've been granted. We won't know what we've been granted until we get that approval letter from, from the state office in the first place. But, uh, again, even though you may have a, one or two that might want to combine their efforts, that's great, on the item that's in the AEL. But you still can compete. Uh, the other 16 or so uh, volunteers could still compete for what they want because all of it, even even though it's going to be combined, it's going to be competitive. Nothing is like it was before where we had 75000 This money was granted to Sumter County to use as they saw fit. Now, the monies that are out there is going to be competitively bidded by all 67 counties. So I won't, uh, I'll probably have five or six. They may have ten. But each one of them we will be looked at, and there's no uh, special privileges given to any county saying that you're going to get something because you got to competitively bid for it. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Gully. Is there a motion? I have, I have one more question for it, um, Mrs. Gully. The uh, the entities that may apply, uh, do they have to have the NIM certification in order to apply? Thank you, yes. NIMS, they do have to have that certification. Yes, because uh, the housing is going to be such that. If one of the inspectors throughout the uh, lifespan of this grant comes by my office, which I am the uh, record keeper of the NIMS classes, comes by and pulls up and says, Margaret, I need to see, um, just name whoever. I go to their folder and they tell me they have a membership list of five or ten, they're not on there, or they haven't taken the classes, then that money that was granted to that person because I submitted it, therefore I should have made sure that that person was eligible to receive it, and I choose not to do that, then the county commission uh, is going to be liable for returning that money back because it was improperly given. So that's why 
I am, at the local level, making sure that whoever submits their application uh, have their federal certification mm -hmm. to even be eligible to receive it. Mm -hmm. So that I won't be, uh, when one of the inspectors come, saying that I thought they had it. I want to know that they have it and have it on file to present to them when they come. So we won't be paying back money. We're going to be the grant recipient. Yes. Period. <coughs> period. Okay. As always. We've been grantee, and when we get funds, I mean, get items for, I always present to you the transfer of that item from our uh, lawful hands to theirs so that it can be placed in insurance at their expense. And we would know we would relinquish any ties that we have with it. It is now theirs, is and, it? and that's why I put on the uh, exhibit sheet the cost of the item, the serial numbers of the item. So if it's lost or stolen and you don't have it insured, then this is what you are going to be liable for because they do monitoring on items, and we have to present all the items that we've purchased for uh, an individual. And if they can't uh, see that it matches up, then you're going to be responsible for that. Okay. Is, is there a motion to adopt, Commissioner? I don't know. I, I, I didn't have okay. it. Uh, I just was Presenting. 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 Okay, okay. So okay. that every, everyone would know the, the level okay. of the email that I sent out and the time frame in which we were working with. Okay. It was Thank just you. more of an update. Okay, all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions for Mrs. Gully, you all? Are there any more questions? Thank you so much, Mrs. You're Gully. You're welcome. County Engineer, Mr. Craig. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have the items in skip your package. Just skip oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse Wait. me, Mr. Chris. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Please excuse me. City of York. Excuse me. City of York. Who spoke to this commission? I don't care. Mr. Chairman, um, a week to 10 days ago, the commission went, met with the city of York and attorneys and other financial uh, entities in reference to uh, communication in ref uh, as opposed to the uh, enamel and dispatching. Uh, we asked them to get information back to us as quickly as possible uh, to satisfy some of the concerns that were mentioned at the meeting. And Ms. Cocker did an excellent job of presenting what additional uh, police protection would cost. However, the city of York at this time doesn't have police protection in the form of municipal officers. Uh, the sheriff is doing the best he can as far as patrolling uh, and answering emergency calls. However, the question that was asked about the dispatching apparatus. Um, we have some citizens who are very concerned about that question and um, again the city of York's police department was put on furlough until the um, dispatching uh, question could be answered. Uh, so I was wanting to get an update on that. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, Commissioner Armstead has a question on the table, so I'm assuming the question would be coming from Sheriff Harris. Well, actually, uh, EMA direct. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, our 911 director, Mr. Creel. Chairman, uh, yes, sir. I think Mr. Creel was one. The sheriff, uh, the attorneys were all supposed to be getting information, and that information was was the thing that we met about. But we also talked about in the future that there was a possibility that the city would ask for the sheriff department to take over the policing. But that was a secondary issue uh, compared to the dispatching concerns and questions that they had as far as what it would take for the E911 to take over the City of York's dispatcher. But the City of York has taken a different route now, right, Commission? I think they're checking options as far as who will work with them. <clears throat> okay, but they have closed their, their apartment. Right, right? They, and they, they, they had to close it because they hadn't gotten any an agreement with either of the entities that they've been talking with. Okay. Therefore, until they can get an agreement with E911 dispatching, mm -hmm. you can't have a police department. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why we have some of our citizens here, and we also have three commissioners, myself and Mr. Hall and Commissioner Walker, that have citizens that reside in York. And so I was just trying to see what information was available to us since that 10 days has elapsed. Okay. Okay. But in a meeting, which was call meeting, we informed them that as soon as our administrator, our attorney, and E11 director would be able to 
and the sheriff department would be able to get this material together, together, and they would come up with uh, some uh, prices and expenses. Then we would make a decision. But we could not make a decision at that point when they brought it to our attention because we could not make decisions at the spare of the moment, moment and doing a call meeting because that was not an emergency meeting. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Jackson just uh, elaborated on what I had said that we asked them to get the information to us so that we can make an informed decision at the work session that we had. So they were checking on the insurance, they were checking on the cost and equipment. So okay. that's okay. all I'm asking you. Okay. Mr. Creer, as the E9 woman chair, if you have any information, whoever may have some to uh, give us to let us know what it's take to get that dispatching done. Okay, all right, okay. Okay. Have yeah, they been able to get it done? That's, what, that's, that's what we're asking, Mr. Jackson. Let's, let's let them speak, please. As I recall, uh, they were going to bring some information to today's meeting. And uh, as it was already been stated, uh, they closed their operations uh, prior to today's meeting. Mm -hmm. So, let, 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 Mr. Chairman, may I? Please, go on. Yes. Let, me, let me refresh everybody's memory. At the work session. Well, let, me, let me go a little no, further. No, no, uh, Mr. Chairman has already acknowledged me. At, at the meeting, at the work session, it was indicated that you and others had concerns about insurance and liabilities, the sheriff brought out some uh, concerns that he had he was checking on, and that the attorneys were going to look at what, <clears throat> what liability would be incurred and report back to the commission. And we're talking about dispatching. Uh, uh, again, Ms. Cocker did a great job as far as letting us know what it would cost if the county takes on this additional responsibility. However, the city of York at this time was asking about dispatching. They said that this part, this could possibly come up at a later date. However, the dispatching aspect of it would allow the city of York to continue or, or to restart its policing uh, in the municipality. But the dispatching is a concern. No dispatch, no police. Okay. So uh, no police. So, what good is it? So, um, commissioners and our administrator, sheriff, and our 911 direct engineer. Mr. Crib, is there any update or uh, any information that can be provided to the question that Commissioner Armistead just asked? I know you all, I don't know if y'all had a chance to get together collectively. Is there a, an answer to his question? If, if I'm wrong, Mr. Chairman, as far as the information that we, uh, the, the uh, I guess the agreement or what we were waiting on with those who were at that work session, if I said something that was uh, not correct. You all can update me now, but again, we were waiting for information with the concerns of the share, liability, and what it would take for the county to dispatch for the city of York. Okay. Ms. Carl. It is my understanding from conversation with Attorney Pruitt that he and Richard Crow were working together. And one of the things that they found out is that uh, and as long as they had a police department that they couldn't dispatch. Am I, am I correct? Correct. So, uh, and then after that, I mean, it's Friday afternoon, you know, we go, you know, everything changes, let's be honest. The thing was changing every other hour. You hear something, that, you read something in the paper, you read, heard something on the television. And after that, he made that decision. I mean, there's nothing else to do. I mean, we were looking at something we stated that we couldn't get because it was going to take a while. And, um, and after that, you know, they came out on the third went Friday afternoon that they were going to close the police department. So, I mean, that was that. Right. And the police department was closed because an agreement had not been reached with any not, in, oh, I'm sorry. with either entity that the city of York had been working with. Therefore, if they were not able to have dispatching, the mayor and council or decided they would put the police department on furlough until an agreement could be reached with one of the entities that they were working with to try and get dispatching. What entity were they working with? I think they were working with Greene County and uh, Sumter County. How were they working with Sumter County and we don't know nothing about it? You were the, wait, 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 Mr. Chairman. Yeah, okay, what, 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 what
Commissioner Armistead, Mr. Crick, come on. So, so I'm, I'm sitting here, and the, the request that we put forward to the employees of the Sumter County Commission was to get the information, contact the insurance company, find out what the liabilities are, give us the information so we can make an informed decision of what we need to do about uh, either dispatching or not dispatching what the liabilities are, and that's what we were waiting on. And so we set to, to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, Attorney Pruitt and Attorney Cross were going to get together. Uh, Mr. Creel was going to be involved. The sheriff's going to be involved and check with his sheriff association who was he was checking with. So that's what I was waiting on. Okay, all right, Mr. Creel. Two things. First of all, we had already spoken to our insurance carrier prior to that work session and raised liability concerns at that time. The mayor said that such an agreement an arrangement as the city was proposing was working all over the place and said agreements were there and they, everybody was happy. And I asked the mayor to simply present one of those agreements. Had seen one. The insurance liability concerns had been raised prior to that meeting and they are unchanged. Uh, if the sheriff's dispatchers are dispatching some other agency's officer and there's litigation. Whose litigation is it? The county automatically is involved in it. The commission association, the sheriff can speak for himself when he has his turn to speak, but I suspect he's going to say the same about the sheriff's association, had serious concerns about how the liability concerns would be addressed. Uh, as we all know, undoubtedly, something is going to happen at some point. And those liability questions, who's going to be responsible for what, held harmless or whatever the case may be, uh, was of concern. Okay, all right. Thank you, Ms. Chris. Sheriff, uh, Ms. Cochran, Sheriff, then Ms. Cochran. Well, I'm just going to reiterate what, what uh, Engineer Creer said. Um, when I talked to the Sheriff Association, they told me we really do not need to be doing anything in the city of York without a contract. Okay. I mean, right. Just point blank. Okay. Because if anything happens, the liability will be on us. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. What type of contract is that? Would it be, Sheriff, a contract with, with 911 dispatching? Yes. Did they have any sample contracts that they may be We're in the process of getting samples, but again, um, that has not happened yet. Um, and I, I don't want to say, but I mean, uh, are we not moving fast enough for the city of New York? Well, I, I wouldn't say we're moving fast enough, but uh, I guess, you know, as a commissioner, I, I would hope that I wouldn't have to wait every time that uh, we were asking for information that it had to be from meeting to meeting. I would like to get updates in between so that I'll be able to know what to say to my constituents as they ask what the commission is going to do. And, you know, it's been, again, about 10 days. And, um, you know, I know that these things are being done. I know Mr. Chris said he had asked the mayor for a copy of the contracts. But, you know, we, we do have situations where the town of Cuba, for example, I believe that, that we contract with them, right? Or we <coughs> dispatch for them. So there has to be something. I mean, if the city of York had to pay additional insurance for liability, okay, so be it. Let's just find out what it takes to do it. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, uh, you know, if I have to make the calls myself, I'll do it. I mean, I can call the insurance company. I can do what I need to do. But uh, I do think it's taking too long to answer your question, Sheriff, to uh, give the city of York an answer. Okay. What, uh, Ms. Ms. I'm, I'm going to refer back to that work session that was held. And, um, you know, I'm just discussing time and what I'm supposed to be doing. I think at that particular work session, that we stated that um, we don't have a budget and that we were working on a budget and trying to get a budget by September 30th. That was stated at the commission meeting. So it's not like we can just devote our time to the city of York. And theoretically, you know, and it's only been five business days. Exactly, exactly. And you know, it's not like, um, I mean, it's not like they didn't know what she didn't know. We're not, we're not basing our decisions on what anybody else did or didn't do. This is something kind of commission, and 
and a request has been brought to our attention, a need for one of the municipalities in our jurisdiction to a great extent. Uh, I know we don't run the York Police Department, but they have asked us for assistance. And, you know, dispatching, I know it's an important aspect of policing. However, I think that we should be able to move faster with a yes or a no than what we have. Commissioner Jackson. I think that if they were that interested, they appeared here for a call meeting. We had to uh, alleviate some of the things that we had on our agenda for last Thursday and come down here to a meeting for them. They knew that we could not make a decision or that we informed them that we could not make a decision. The only thing that I was in Florida and I found out, saw it on my iPhone, that they had closed down or were going to close down the city of York from the police department. Well, if they were so important, interested in us and our decision, I feel like they would have been here today. I see the citizens, and I appreciate the citizens for coming. But there is elected officials that should have been here today. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, you can have, go and tell them I said it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, we have three elected officials here, sir, that, that represent the city of York. You have Mr. Holliday, Mr. Mr. Uh, Stephen Walker, and myself. So we are the elected officials that represent the city of York. They've already made their request be known to us. Are you all the only one? Must yes, that represent a portion. That of your represent. I'm not talking about a portion. Are you all the only ones that represent York? Well, I'm just talking about the ones who seem like they're concerned about helping. Everybody should be if they put their name on the ballot to be elected. I agree. Who want to represent the nobody? Sir? Yeah, man, I got to say. I, I don't mind this. I'm calling a spade a spade because I feel like the mayor should be here. Well, let uh, me say this wait, 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 excuse, excuse, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, excuse, no, no, wait, wait a minute, excuse, no, we, we're, you're not on the agenda, we, we can't have this, again, we, 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 we get ready to move forward, it's, excuse me, we, we need to, we need to keep it quiet, at this time now, if there's not an answer for Commissioner, um, on Stead's question, we're going to move forward. No, so sir, that, that's not acceptable yet, Mr. Chairman. Excuse me, okay. but, but we haven't gotten anything that satisfied the citizens of York or myself as a commissioner that says that we can or we cannot provide dispatching services for the city of York. The only way that the city of York can bring their municipal officers back is if they have dispatching services. So. The, my understanding from the mayor and council is that they wanted to keep their policing in the city of York. However, with the advice of their attorney, of course, you can't have police officers if you don't have dispatching. So we, as a commission, needs to make a quick decision, not a hasty decision, not an in, uninformed decision. That's why I was asking for, and we were asking for information from our employees, E911, uh, 911, uh, our sheriff, uh, Anybody that could give us information as to how we could come up with a decision to help the city of York out. Okay, look, at the end we'll come back to you. Let me mention something else that was said at that meeting, if you all recall. When we were talking about community pension officer, although the, I think the mayor said it, and Richard Crow, and with the financial guy, they said by November 1, they wanted to do away with the law enforcement officer. Now, did I hear that? Yes. By November 1, so. Why are we trying to do an interim between now and November 1? When November 1 comes, they're going to be without officers anyway. Now, the mayor said that. Mr. Chairman, uh, that, was, that was Mr. Robb who said that by November 1st, they were possibly coming back for a, with another proposal to possibly take over the policing for the city bill. Uh, they weren't asking for it to happen by November 1, they, but they were looking at the possibility of coming and asking by November 1st. Yes, sir. I think the people... The people y'all y'all are concerned that y'all are being covered, correct? That's right. I hate to put the sheriff on the spot, but Sheriff Harris, if you get a call from York, are you going to answer your call? We'll co co of course, right? Yes. So York will be covered. 
I, I got faith in the sheriff that he will cover your to best his ability. So the, the, the small things that are being worked out, well, the, we're making them big things, but anyway, that's going to take a little time. But I do think that the sheriff is going to react as quick as he can to get services and help right now. So that, that's just my opinion. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to get a, 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 my, my head wrapped around everything that uh, is being said right now. You know, I, I know the operations of everything. The sheriff wants to work with the commissioners for is making sure that uh, any financial obligations would be covered. You know, the sheriff is the person who would make the decision. But again, I understand Sheriff uh, Harris coming in and trying to get his feet wet and make sure he makes great decisions, and we appreciate that. But do you have a time frame, Sheriff, as when we may be able to get the information, whether we need to continue this meeting to tomorrow or Wednesday? Do you have any type of a time frame that we may be able to work with? Uh, Commissioner Olmstead, I have no update at this point. Okay, Commissioner Olmstead, has that answered the question? Uh, it answered from the sheriff, yes, sir. But I guess my next question is, can we, the city of New York and the citizens, get the same agreement that the town of Cuba has as far as dispatching services at I, this time? I don't know what type of agreement they have. I don't. Right, but I know that they do dispatch through the Sumter County E911. So again, your question is, can the city... What well, I would like to... I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, go ahead. You would like to ask for the town, city of York to have the same type of agreement as the town of Cuba. Right. Uh, to be presented with the same opportunities that uh, another law enforcement office uh, entity has uh, with the Sumter County E911. Uh, I know there are going to be some costs associated. We have no doubt about that. But right now, the city of York, with two banks and many businesses, multiple businesses, uh, you know, I understand what Sheriff Harris said. He, he told me the same thing, that he would treat the city of York just like he'd treat any other entity in, in Sumter County. However, you know, uh, with two banks and all those businesses and, 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 and the citizens with uh, the concerns that I have as well, we want to have our own police protection that will be based right there in the city limits of York. So that is my concern right there, that... If we can get the same services for the town of York that the town of Cuba has, the dispatching services, and I want that on the table for discussion. Okay, Commissioners, you all have heard a request coming from Commissioner Almostead, and he's asked for a discussion. Uh, questions from the Commission? Now, yes. Is this included? on the agenda yes, under the city of York? Yes, ma'am. I added that to be able to discuss. Yes, ma'am. Are, um, are you familiar with the contract with you? No, sir. I'm, I'm asking, can we, I mean, there may not be a contract. If there's not a contract, so be it. But we need dispatching for the city of York to be able to maintain our police force, to be able to give good and more Reliable, not to say that the sheriff wouldn't give reliable services, but Sumter County is a big county. If you got one officer at North Sumter and one at South Sumter and those two banks, that wouldn't be a good response time. It may be the best response time they can give, but it wouldn't be a good one. But when all of this was decided, you know, nothing, and when we met with the city, they did not tell us that they were going to shut down their police department because they did not have a 911 board, a 911 department. You know, if I would decide to throw my husband out the door, I think my first thought would be, am I throwing him out before I get his paycheck that he worked <laughs> last week with? <laughs> you know, because I think the paycheck would be more important. And that would be important for you not to throw the police department 
and the 911 board out if you're thinking about your citizens and your businesses. At the same time. Yeah, you're going to throw all both of them out before you throw anything else out. At the same time. At the same time. My, my point is, uh, you know, if then she did what, what we thought gonna, first, what we're going to do now is the, is, the, is, the, is the point. Right. But leading up to this situation, I have reiterated this right here, even with the school system and other incidents. She saw the ship sinking. I, she, I mean, the mayor should have seen what was coming. I don't remember her trying to do a telethon. I don't remember her trying to do nothing to stop the ship from sinking. There were means that she could have taken, come in on stage, to at least sustain until she could have got with a, do you not agree? Oh, yes, sir. I, I agree with that. Okay. That, 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 that could have been and should have been. Uh, but Way right, before now. Right, but right now, I, 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 I know we're at this point. Yes, sir. I agree with you. I know we're at this point, and we and, and everything is dumped in our lap. But uh, there, and, I, and you know, I want it. You know, I want. I'm, I'm with you on certain things. But the leadership, and I've often talked about that. The right. people that we choose to lead us, sometimes we're forsaken us, and that's what have happened with the citizens of York. You all have been. We all have been forsaken because. There, this just didn't come up yesterday. The money didn't start to miss it yesterday. It's been an ongoing process. And she's been in office going on five years ago with nobody ran against her. So if she saw this going down here, there should have been something at least trying to save the police department or save the 911 board. It's true. Something. I agree with that, uh, Commissioner Hall. No, okay. okay. However, okay. if I, if I, if I, if I Commissioner Armistead, yes, right, right, right before, because we, 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 we turning and turning. Chair, on the request that Commissioner Armistead talked about <clears throat> the agreement with the town of Cuba, um, any intel on that uh, as far as Commissioner Armistead is talking about the agreement with the town of Cuba? What are your views on that? Well, um, Chairman Campbell, I've been here on what, three weeks now? Yes, sir. So that's not one of the things that I've looked into okay. at this point. Okay, thank you, Sheriff. Yes, thank you. Mr. Craig, Engineer Career 911 Director. Chairman. You, are you familiar with that agreement? I am familiar with no written agreement. I am familiar with a practice uh, that Cuba, Epps, when they had an officer, Gainesville, when they had an officer, were dispatched by the sheriff's office or had some kind of play with that officer, uh, that loan officer. There was no need to have any such agreement with York or Livingston who maintain their own dispatchability, uh, any calls that we receive from New York. And I say we. Uh, let me back up to say the 911 board uh, does not have any employees. The 911 board has equipment that the Sheriff's Department has used since the inception of 911 in Sumter County uh, to provide dispatch service with. The only employee that we have right now is an employee we share with you, Margaret Gutter, who serves as CMA director as also as part-time 911 director. Uh, she handles addressing, uh, she works with things that software and what have you that we include with the dispatch equipment. Uh, she has some interaction with the dispatchers, uh, <coughs> obviously subject to whomever the sheriff is at the time because the dispatchers are county employees working directly for the sheriff. Uh, so now my understanding of that is simply uh, from my involvement with 911 and my understanding of what has taken place, but I have not seen any form of agreement at any time uh, for Cuba or any other town that had a loan officer, such as my understanding of what Cuba has today. Okay, thank you. 
Yes, sir. And, and, and you know, if, if Pastor Wilson was to jump in the water and, and can't swim, my first inclination is not going to be, why did you jump in that water and can't swim? If I can swim, I'm going to go in there and get it. So it was his fault to jump in there, but I'm still going to save him. And we have some issues that are on the table that have come to our attention as county commissioners that if there are cost associated liabilities that we should pass those on to the city of York in, in reference to if there needs to be an employee or two added to the Sumter County dispatchers, the numbers, um, that should be taken into consideration. Uh, but right now, uh, I am going to put a motion on the table that we uh, accept the additional dispatching for the city of York so that we can bring our police officers back on duty. And that is a motion. All right, say it again because I'm confused. What part you got confused about, sir? The whole thing. Okay. I would like to put, I'm putting a motion on the table that, uh, well, first of all, I guess, maybe I need to ask a question first. Is that a decision of the sheriff or would it be a decision of the commission? For what? I think that'd be Dispatching. I think Dispatching. that'd be a sheriff's decision. We've already. I'm just saying. No, I'm asking if, if you can't have, answer, I'm, a, I'm asking anybody that can answer the question. Have we already made a decision to freeze the assets? Right now, I think the motion you want to make is already he's already doing. No, see, see. Because see, he's already he's already covering. He's York. already covering your through Let's the do. county commission. We're already paying for him to cover yeah. whatever needs they have for right now. I'm That's the reason we froze those me, assets no, listen, right now. Let me just actually get through. I'll see if I can clear it up a little bit. Okay, initially, the first agenda item was Ms. Cockle did a great job as far as presenting to the Sumter County Commission that it would cost approximately $460,000 for the county to take on the extra responsibility of providing additional police protection for the City of York. The City of York currently pays about a half million dollars, which is about $500,000 for uh, police and dispatch. They're looking at cutting costs. Uh, the City of York can't afford to pay $460,000 uh, to Sumter County for policing of uh, uh, the City of York for additional officers. Therefore, the City of York is requesting that dispatching services be provided because you can't have police officers or police department without dispatching services. We already have and have had, according to Mr. Crear, agreements, whether written or verbal, with other entities throughout the county over the years, whether it be Cuba, ML, Geiger, whoever had police officers, and we have done it for them. Therefore, again, I would like for the city of York to be treated just like any other municipality who have had or have police officers or law enforcement officers the same as the city of York. But, but they are. They're being covered. No. The, the, when they had police officers, they were not with dispatch service. Right now, the city of York don't have police officers because you don't have or dispatch, dispatch service. So they, guess, don't, they don't have neither. They don't have police or dispatch. Right. They had to close the police department down because you don't have dispatch services. I really Once you get p p dispatch services, they're going to bring those officers off of furlough and put them back to work. Who told you that? That is the mayor and council's uh, plans. As of right now, all I know is the city of York is being covered by our sheriff. Right. And, 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 so and why do we have to take action on anything? The city, I, I of, York, the city of York, the University of West Alabama, every other <coughs> municipality and every other system is being covered by the sheriff as well. The sheriff's responsibility, if I'm mistaken, is to cover the entirety of the county because he's the chief law enforcement officer of the county. Therefore, we're asking that the city of York be given the opportunity to have the same services that Wait. other entities, you're not going to understand because you don't want to, but the city of York should have the same right and responsibility that any other entity. Uh, Mr. Creer, our E911 chair, just said that we have had other entities to get dispatch either now and or then but through no the Sumter agreement. County Dispatch. We've had no written agreement. Well, we don't need one now. I know. So what are we talking about? <laughs> Let's move on to something else. So, so we, we okay. <laughs> okay. okay. We're going nowhere uh, here. Mr. Creer. Let me make a distinction. That dispatch that you're saying is the same that the city of York desires, uh, 
My understanding is the mayor has an administrative line at the police department that receives a number of calls, enough calls to keep five dispatchers busy that the city of York uh, formerly employed. Is that correct? There was one dispatcher per shift, yes, sir. Five dispatchers at the city of York formerly one, employed. One dispatcher per shift, yes, sir. And those calls were not just the 911 calls that they weren't receiving directly. Those 911 calls come to the sheriff's office first. Once that dispatcher discerns that it is a city of York emergency call, then they transfer the call to York. But there are a number of calls that aren't coming to the sheriff's office for those city of York dispatchers. Uh, the town of Cuba is not generating such calls at the sheriff's office. The town of Epps did not, Monastan and Gainesville did not. So really what we're talking about is all those other calls. Uh, there's a dog in my neighbor's yard that's a little loud, threatening. Might not necessarily be a 911 call, uh, but it may be a police matter. And there are many others that came uh, to that number that are going to the city of Livingston's number that come to the sheriff's office that are not 911 calls. I think that's really what we're talking about, and that is a difference. Okay, so so Mr. Cribb, correct me if I'm wrong. So, if we, the citizens of York, the mayor and council, was to do away with that five two six one number, and the citizens couldn't call that number, that would eliminate the problem you're talking about. I didn't say that. What I said is those calls. Don't get upset. I'm, were, I'm having conversation. Those calls that initially we were told, those calls were going to be forwarded to the sheriff's office. Right. So if, if we were subsequently we were told that all the alarms in York would be programmed to dial nine one one, which the state nine one one executive director has told me is illegal. We were, we have been told a number of things along those lines. As, as of late Friday evening, I think the mayor and council did disseminate information for them to tell the 65227, whatever that number is, not 911. That was a memo so, uh, that they never told anybody so, to dial again, for the alarms. Uh, I don't think the sheriff has an issue with The sheriff is currently, uh, his dispatchers are responding to 911 calls. Uh, there has been a study done, as you know, and we are still actively working toward some form of a consolidated 911, obviously not fast enough to resolve this situation, but we're still working toward it. But the issue is still those non emergency calls. Right. <coughs> uh, in a neighboring county, uh, they have an arrangement, Marengo County, where the entities, uh, I understand there are eight municipalities or some such number in Marengo County, they all have an arrangement with the 911. They make a contribution toward that 911 service based on their call volume for those non emergency calls. Some of those entities retain someone on staff X number of hours a day. Some of them retain no one on, on staff at all. All of their calls are going to that call center. But once again, we're talking about for those non emergency calls. Right. So that Mr. town of Cuba was not generated. Right. So, Mr. Chairman, other commissioners, so if we were to ask the city of York to discontinue that non-emergency number that they were considering <coughs> forwarding to the Sumter County E911, I think that would solve that issue as far as non-emergency calls. We can't ask them to do anything. Yes, ma'am, we can ask them. Who? I said we can't People. tell them, we can ask them. Who, the county commission? Right. Uh, uh, they have the sheriff a or whoever. governmental body of their own, and the sheriff, and nobody else can't tell them what to do. I'm saying if we ask them in order for 911 dispatching services to be available, that, that would be one of the criteria if the sheriff agreed with it, that if they did away with that number, did not forward that number to the Sumter County E911, that that would eliminate the possibility of somebody dialing that 3925261 number for non-emergency calls. And the city of York will be responsible for getting that information out, disseminating that that 3925261 number is no longer in existence. Don't call it, you won't get a response. You got to dial 911 in order to get a response from E911. Sure. 
Yes, sir. I just want to make it clear, you know, we do have some citizens of New York in here. If there's anybody in this room that wants to help the city of New York, I've spent my entire career here. Would you know that? Um, that would be me. But until we can actually get all our legal issues and our contracts in place, this can't happen. That's just the bottom line. Well, well, Sheriff, you, 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 those, those employees work for you, Sheriff, and, and I thought that what we were trying to do here was work out some of the concerns or, or, the, or the issues that the commission and yourself have as far as uh, and the, the information, the concerns that Mr. Cribb brought up about the 5261 number about not being an emergency number. And contracts, uh, again, you know, we could go with a a verbal contract, uh, but right now the city of York just needs dispatching services, and right now you're the person who could make that decision. So if you're saying that you need contracts, I mean that's your decision, sir. Yes, sir, because there are legal liability issues that go along with that decision. Thank you, Sheriff. Are there any more questions? Any more questions? Next item, County Engineer. Damn, where the county engineer head now? All right, yes, sir. All right, I've just got three items that are in your package, and they require no action from you. They're simply updates. Okay. The first two have to do with the operations of the Bellamy Lagoon, mm -hmm. uh, a recent unannounced inspection. Uh, those first two really are a result of the same inspection. Uh, the only finding that they noted at that time was the flow meter we used. Uh, its calibration was out of date, and they asked us to respond with proof that it had been calibrated with the tools from the date of that letter. And the last uh, picture of a gauge that you see in there is proof of that, that we had that done. Uh, the third item that you see there uh, has to do with, and I'm on to item I now, if there are no questions about G and A. Uh, okay. Item I has to do with the groundwater monitoring you have at the closed sanitary landfill on County Road 9. Uh, we are having some additional monitoring, as you know, uh, related to uh, groundwater constituents that have been determined uh, per the inspections. And with the limited data, since we've only been doing this for a few years, uh, probably two or three at the most, uh, if you read the, the summary there, you'll find within where it says that it appears that the constituents are either at level or appear to be uh, detectable levels are lowering. Uh, he does go on toward the end of the summary to note that uh, part of the testing that uh, they would normally do uh, they were not unable to do due to some errors on their part. Uh, so they will certainly uh, follow up on that uh, on the next round of monitoring. But they also go on to note that uh, two of the two consecutive samples we had done previously uh, even show for uh, the constituents that were in uh, the tier two sampling uh, also appear to be lowering. Uh, they did know that uh, one of the constituents, I think it was cobalt, uh, exceeded the ADEM allowable uh, for it, but overall all the constituents seem to be, uh, detectable levels seem to be lowering. Okay. Thank you. So that, there's nothing to add other than obviously based on that, uh, the fact that we even are finding those constituents, we will have to monitor uh, to such point as those constituents aren't being found. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Appreciate it. Any questions for our engineer? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Cree. Yeah, Mr. Cree, have you yes, gotten the uh, other motor grader that you got fixed? The glass and the other motor grader has been fixed recently, yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So is it running? It's available to run. Uh, it did not run today, but it's very good to run. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got some roads. Uh, you have some. Um, Mr. 
Mr. Israel has some. I suspect that Mr. Campbell hopes right. up. He might yeah, have some. Right. I do. You already know I got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but, but we are going to uh, spend some time breaking so we'll get that up later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much, Mr. Chris. Thank you. Item J Commissioners is coming from uh, Mrs. Ho Ms. Holloway, Executive Director. They're having a cleanup day on Saturday across the street in the office building, and they're going to have about 40 particip particip participants over there. Excuse me. And they will submit the waivers on Monday the 19th. So that's a great thing that we have some people who are actually in some of the county property and they want to give it a facelift. So we really appreciate them taking that initiative to go head on and paint and do other upgrade items that are needed over there in that field. Any questions on that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are the waivers necessary to have, Ms. Cochran, do you know? Are they necessary? Do you know that they're hurt? So they're going to do the work but not present the waivers until the... They, they're going to sign the commissioner that morning before they do the work. They're going to have the waivers present for them to sign even before they start working on, okay. on Saturday morning. <clears throat> if anybody want to participate, they're taking extra hands at 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. on this upcoming Saturday. Are there any more questions? If not, next item, new business section. K, uh, and this is with Dallas County the annual youth service contract that you have in your packet commissioners. Hopefully everybody has a chance to, to look over that. And then, again, that agreement is with the Dallas County uh, Detention Center. Is there a motion to adopt? I so move. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion by Commissioner Hall, second by Commissioner Is there a question? All in favor with the raise of your right hand. Motion carried now. Commissioner Jackson. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, I have uh, quite a few, all of the roads that I have listed, but definitely the Watson Road, Nat Jones Road, the Dan Mitchell Road, the Henderson Road, and the Flemings and the Henley Road, they need to be graded. But the Henderson Road and the Flemings, as well as the Nat Jones Road, need those trees cut on them too. Okay, all right. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. And, and any other comments on that? Anything coming from the Commissioner? Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. And now, but before we get into this great recognition, just, just one thing I know, Ms. Cocker put a letter in you all's box, and for, I know sometimes we grab our mail, we're moving so fast, but Mary Pond sent a card, and I hope everybody took time out to read the letter of her appreciation and thanks to us and uh, the commissioners who attended the convention was with her and she just really appreciate the generous donation that the Sumter County Commission gave to her. So everybody know what they did from our administrator, our engineer, and all of the commissioners. So and she was just blown away when she opened up her card with what was in there from all of us. So if you didn't get a chance to read the card that was the message in the box, she really, really appreciate that you all. So thanks for that. And she really, again, thank the Sumter County Commission. And now, this young man was recognized at the Association of County Commissioners 88 Convention for his labor, hard work, his diligence to Sumter County for 28 young years of service. <laughs> and... Uh, it's just remarkable and outstanding to be blessed for such a time in public service and being the type of servant that he is. And I'm sure, uh, as I know, he shared with you other commissioners and to our audience stories about when he first got on board as a county commissioner and back in those days what he had to endure. And he stayed, of course, and, and it's just a testament of his hard work and labor. And... It gives all of us great pleasure on behalf of the Association of County Commissioners to present this crystal award to the one and only <laughs> big one thousand zillion dollar bill <laughs> being the man walker. And this reads 
Association of County Commissions of Alabama, ACCA, proudly recognizes Ben Walker for 28 years of outstanding and dedicated service to the county government in Alabama with the Sumter County Commission. So let's just show our love to this And I tell you, it, it was just awesome when you when you hear those number of years that are being recorded. It's just awesome to have a, a true true servant like this. So a great leader, great young man, and then as I stated, just an awesome individual to not work with because when you do what you love to do, it's not work, but just to serve with. So congratulations to you. Hold it up so walking. your wife can take your picture, Bean. And after we take our pictures and everything, <laughs> our administrator, our clerk, clerks have prepared refreshments for Commissioner Walker. So we thank you all for going above and beyond and doing that. So again, let's just show our love. <laughs> All day we can't. We want to put our arms around this young man as he. Oh, okay. After you take some pictures with him, I don't know how you want to do it. He might. Yeah. Yes, yes, but but okay, but uh, at this time, is there a motion to adjourn? Work session. Work session. I so moved that we adjourn. We have a work session schedule. Yes, uh, to the work session. Okay, has been motion by Commissioner Jackson, second by Commissioner Ezell. Questions. All in favor, raise your right hand. Meeting adjourned. To the work session. All right. Yes. Yes. You all, please. How you doing, Pastor? Good. First lady. Good. How you doing? Good. Good. Good, man. Congratulations for being.